How am I supposed to track that? That's illegal. Well, I won't be needing this anymore. All right, so let's find a nice big flat area to build in. This is next to the Syndicate Tower, and I'm just going to start it off simple. You know, not everyone is going straight into Ore Mining Site 2, so I want to compare, like, the rates, the speed, the pals, and all of that fun stuff. All right, first thing we need to do is catch three random dig toys. That way we have a nice control, no breeding, no shenanigans. You're just doing a normal playthrough, and you want to see how many ore you can get with the new stations. All right, 70 work speed, 70 work speed, and 70 work speed. Nothing good or bad. Now, because we have an ore quarry, it's probably just best to build over the rocks that spawn in your base. That way, they don't get pulled off of the quarry. As you can see, rocks are still taking priority unless you man manually assign. That can still be a little annoying and finicky. All right, so I'm doing a six-minute test away from the base because that's the cool thing about stations, that you don't have to be there. It's not like the overworld ore where they just won't mine and pick up the items. And while I wait, I'm gonna plug G Fuel. It's the best energy drink I've had. Without it, I wouldn't be able to grind as much as I do and make the best guides for Pal World Pokemon and whatever else I play. So find yourself a great flavor, all kinds of different options to get the caffeine you need for work, school, or gaming. Use code Relicify 20% off your G Fuel order. That will happen. You're not going to get perfect 100%. They're going to sleep. They're going to slack off. So maybe you need two of the hot springs or something. And I'm going to wait 15 more seconds before we check. So six minutes means multiply this by 10. And that's how many per hour on just this ore. But man, I guess they were slacking off or just not working at all. Yeah, the mining station wrecks their sanity. My goodness. Now, now they're just taking turns and tag teaming it. All right, so what have we learned? We need four mining pals and 1.5 to two hot springs per station. Also, salad's OP, but they're kind of mid-late game. However, like a really functioning base is going to want them. So I'm going to do the test with that. Really good sanity and nutrition. All right, and after about 10 minutes away from base, we're at 190 ore. So that's going to put us well over 1,000 ore per hour on just four dig toys and actual amenities. All right, same setup. Ore Quarry 2, as well as the mining station. Going to head back over to the other base, check back in, in 10 minutes. All right, just under 10 minutes is going to bring us 900 ore. And it is absolutely zooming. Five, over 5,000 ore an hour at level 30 something. These aren't even good. These are just wild. All right, game's over, I guess. All right, now let's bring in the absolute squad where we have 195 work speed pals. That's going to be the max amount from the passive skills. 30% I hand fed them a salad because I want to see them work and then this one's 177 because I don't have it all max super duper perfect this is going to be absolute absolutely beyond insane how am I supposed to track that that's illegal after 10 minutes we have 3200 or like how do we keep up with that production that's 10,000 ingots an hour. And I feel like the more surprising thing is Jormantide Ignis, without any work speed buffs, is keeping up. Well, we do have, like, the fire kindling thing. And it's also just a regular improved furnace. So we don't have an electric furnace. We don't have anything else crazy going on. And here's the thing. We haven't even enhanced the work speed of our pals. That says 3%. And it just gave us six work speed. So it's going to be an additional modifier on top of everything. And I'm pretty sure that the way all of this goes, it's pretty flat. So we can increase that by 30% more if we max out all the pals. It is a lot of work, but like you just do little things. Oh man, what's that? I've got 20 small pal souls and like 15 medium ones. Cool. You get the work speed increase. You stack it into your strongest base pal and you're going to just get more out of it. Also, there's all kinds of quality of life to consider now. You can breed Jormantide Ignis with Jormantide and Blaze Howl. So the work speed breeding chain is more accessible. And also you just upgrade your Jormantide Ignis and then it's going to smelt. 
All right, so let's say upper end is like 12,000 ingots per hour if you just kind of like go crazy and max everything out. Problem, that's above the stack limit. So unless you have like multiple quarries and then you're like funneling it into ingot production, that's going to be a thing. That also means you're going to want storage between multiple quarries. That way you can just put the tens of thousands of ore into it and then just do like a huge crafting bundle at once in the furnace. Can a transport pal even keep up at that point? Do we want two Jormantide Ignis just to make sure like we're smelting everything on time as it comes out? Is a Ragnarok even viable with three kindling? And I feel like the three transport, it's just going to be on permanent transport duty. So yeah, do you have like a level four transport and then Jormantide Ignis and that's all automatic? That could be a thing. All right, so let's say every mining station, six pals, because we have four mining pals, two Jormantide. Now there probably can be some overlap to where it's actually like three and a half pals and 1.6 Jormantide. So maybe you can actually have like four of the ore quarries running at around 11 to 12,000 each. An extra transport pal or two to keep everything smooth, and that's 48,000 ingots. The ingots sell for 20 each. So that's a mil an hour on money making, and even on the lower end from the early stuff we saw, you can get a thousand ore in 10 minutes with four bumps. So that's 500 ingots times six, 3,000 ingots an hour, but we could, we could do that times two, and then we go times 20, so two mining stations taking up you know we also we don't like one jormantide is definitely enough for maybe even both outputs at that point so that's eight mining pals a jormantide a level four transport and that's 10 pals so you only need half a base to make a hundred and twenty thousand gold an hour off of selling a crazy amount of ingots now peak salad is about 100k gold per hour with like 10 good pal slots being used so i think like that's what you want you want ore base plus a salad base combined now some people are on the 15 limit no reason not be 20. there's probably a way to make it work also salads have synergy because that's making the food you can sell the rest for a little bit of extra money mining just going to be more money easier and better so that's where all of your production is there now you can double that money even further with nails because even though nails have been nerfed, two nails is 40 gold and you get two nails per craft of one ingot. So that means having a really good handiwork pal can also be incorporated into this, just good to have in general. Now is there something wacky with Ring of Mercy? Costs 30 ingots, 20 palladium fragments, 5 civilization parts, but if you have a crazy excess, Maybe you craft a couple of them. Now, Ring of Mercy sells for 3,000, which means we're getting 100 gold per ingot minus the 500 opportunity cost on like an ancient civilization parts or the five ancient civilization parts. We're still over 80 gold. Okay, so without going completely overboard, an optimal ore mining base will probably have like three of the big hot springs, two of these, a furnace or two, depending on like Jormantide Ignis and stuff. Especially if you don't have like maxed out working speed, then you probably only need one of these. And then I say you build a regular stone pit because you're still going to want mining pals for stone. That way you can do the palladium fragments and they're going to produce a lot of stone as well. Like if there's one or two pals that are out of place, that don't have anything to do, everyone's happy. Well, yeah, then you want as much stone being made as possible. Yeah, we do have a little bit of a problem. Currently, ore doesn't take like 100% priority and then a pal will just start mining here on the stone. I guess eventually it caps out, but then that means you don't have a transport pal, so this will cap out. It's kind of ugly, but you do want like stone and palladium, or just do this on a different base. I think I think that might be the play. I was trying to think about like ultimate maximum efficiency, but the ore is just too powerful on its own. So there we go, guys. That is the new ore mining base for Pal World 0.2. Oh, what's that? Coal and refined ingots? I mean, you see how much ore we're getting? You just do it manually. You just fill up on inventories and then you bring them back. Now that we have Serpent Terra, that works on coal. Build a base in the desert on one of the coal mining sites. You're free. This is this is everything we needed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.